When you get the trick, you're pissed. If it doesn't, if I don't land it in 10 minutes, I'm pissed. Really? Yeah, even if I land it, I'm like, wasted my energy. I should have did that like two days ago. And I love landing tricks and I love getting footage and I love all this and that. But sometimes it just takes longer to do than it needs to because I know my capability better than anybody that could ever even lay eyes on me because no one's around me more than myself. Yeah. So anybody even telling me like, I know you can get it. It's like, I know, I know <laughs> a thousand times more than you think that I could do it. I know I could do it. So like maybe just, I don't even want to hear it. I'm, I'm mad. <laughs> Looks like Wait, are we have we already started? No. No. I was like, is this a, are we doing a whole banter thing here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Recording. We're recording. Boom, we're being live. <laughs> I'm actually gonna try this one for my first time too. Danny's now switching flavors because uh he's worried he's calorie calorie counting. <laughs> Brittany's always been calorie That's counting. Good. It's mad good. And our guest is Ishad. Is it Ashad or Ishad? It's a uh, Ishad. Ishad. Yes. Ishad. Ishad. Where? Where? Yep. Where? I check into um, I check into hotels and they're like, "What's the name under?" I'm like, "Underwear." And they're like, <laughs> they're like, <laughs> like, <laughs> they're like, I'm like, no, nah, they look my down like, wear. Like, <laughs> like you're asking them what underwear they're wearing. You're like, like, is this underwear? <laughs> is this his code name? Yeah, underwear. So that's and a move. My, that's a move you pull. Yeah, my check-in hotel dad joke. Yeah, that's your. What is it under underwear? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Holy shit! And I don't know why I thought that you were always from Philly. Yeah, yeah. But you're from New Jersey. Yep, Jersey. Represent. He, mm -hmm. he was born in New Jersey. That's right. Yeah, we bonded over this. We've yeah. had like a few X Games nights just talking about Jersey. Have yeah. you really? Yeah. Jersey. Oh, you guys, that's what you guys do late night when you hang Well, we kind of like look at each other, you know, like you go to an X Games and there's all these different athletes and you kind of like vibe everyone's on a big level. But then once we realized we were from New Jersey, it was like, like Jer we didn't care. Yeah. yeah. People are trying to talk Fuck to everyone us else. over here. We're like, no, 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 we're, we're actually, we're talking about yeah, the homeland. <laughs> White Castle and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that what it was? White Castle? Is that the? It definitely came into conversation. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Is that is like the the it. California In and Out? Um, you can't White even Castle really is just compare. White Castle. Yeah, yeah. So when they when they did a movie about it, were you guys like, "Fuck yeah, this is the, I'm going to watch it." The Harold and Kumar. <laughs> I mean, I was just I lived it, and I just thought it was normal. I was like, "Oh yeah, a movie about well, aren't White Castles everywhere?" No. Yeah, no, nah, they're not. They're not. No, no they're hard just, to find these days too. Yeah. And a food that you can um, buy frozen, put in the microwave for like a minute, like you uh, take it out of plastic and it's fucking perfect. And, but it's perfect <laughs> until you take you know, a bite. No, later. Oh, until oh, you eat oh, six of them. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hurting. like most things good. I don't know, right? I don't so know. I got a, I feel like I got an iron gut. You do? Yeah. Do you get, you travel a lot. I, I have a week cut. Do you get, uh, do you have a, a, like, is food poisoning a thing that, like, comes up with you, like, in some of these weird countries you're in? No. Always. It, it happens very rarely, but very inconvenient times. Last time I had food poisoning, it was, uh, it was born and raised, um, the born and raised party. Okay. The, the City oh. Hawkins. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I had some snapper. Put me down. Oh, this fish took you down. Took me down. You gotta watch. <laughs> you yeah, gotta no. watch out when they're serving snapper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'll eat it again. I'll try it again. Yeah, I think it was just a fluke. Yeah, you know, F fish it, is not the fish, but an actual fluke. Yeah, I mean, fish is good until <laughs> it was it's a not. major flounder. <laughs> You're a flounder. I don't know. We're talking naming fish. <laughs> so uh, you started skating at nine. Hmm? You started skating. Uh, eight. I Eight. wanted a board at seven, but I wasn't able to get one until, you know, later. Right. And a year later? Yeah. You know, oh, I want this, I want that. Birthday. We'll wait till the birthday. I got the board when it's my birthday, and then that's where this whole how I'm here started. That's crazy because, they like, p parents are kind of right, though. Kids will want a bike, want a skateboard, want a pony, want a this, want a that. You give them a year. Or a year and a half, and let them, if they still want the goddamn thing, then you get them. 
Yeah. Is that how you got the skateboard? <laughs> yeah, I wanted a mongoose, or I wanted a skateboard, and then my mom got me a mongoose. That is not a skateboard. No, it's not a skateboard. <laughs> and I was so bummed. I was like, ah, but it's like they don't get it. They don't get no. the real. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a real thing. Well, maybe she was and, thinking like, well, you now you can ride your bike to the skate park. <laughs> there wasn't a skate park in Ryan distance. The town that I'm from, Bordentown, New Jersey, is where the first uh, schoolhouse in America, and it's also where George Washington crossed from New Jersey oh. into Pennsylvania. You know that photo where he's like standing on front of the boat and he's got the oh, flag. Yeah. He left my town. He was like, "Fucking fuck Jersey," and then he went to PA. Yeah. Really? So yeah. when you were eight, what what made you want that skateboard? Like, what did you see? What did you? Uh, no skate parks. There's no. It just looked fun. It just looked fun. I was just like, damn, they look like they're having a good time. I seen it on TV or something. I think like the X Games or somewhere. I seen it on TV and I was like, it looks like they're having a great time. And then after that, I was like, I want to do that. I played basketball along with any other sport a kid would play in the town with his other friends. And uh, I don't know. It's like, oh, go to basketball practice and be a part of a team and do all this and all these roles and this and that. And it's like, or ride a skateboard. You could literally like do whatever you want with it. So I was like, ah, probably this thing over here where it's like, I don't have to depend on people and people don't have to depend on me. I can kind of just like roam around with my friends, have new adventures every day. And uh, it's just more free, more freedom. Right. That's what I, that's what I was drawn to with the boarding. Skateboarding brings freedom. And were you riding like mostly just kind of flats, concrete, curbs? Yeah. Like what was your first like real uh just progression in a way of like in the um just in the middle of the street, just kicking it around, not really doing much. Cause I also learned at a slower pace because you know, you don't have Instagram and all these videos like being able to like watch how to do this or being able to slow mo everything. It was even before YouTube came about. It was like kind of like I started skating then YouTube came about like kind of like maybe a year or two later. So it's like there wasn't like the slow-mo aspect and all this other stuff. You can't you can like break stuff down. And then I got skateboard product, but I didn't get videos, magazines and like we didn't have money for all that extras. So all I got was a board and then I just had to pretty much try to figure it out by myself. So I was pretty much just kicking around this piece of wood, not doing much for a minute <laughs> and uh, having an amazing time with it. And that, then, um, yeah. Then, that's actually kind of sick though. I think that's how it's supposed to happen. Yeah. I was just like, uh, I got some friends like maybe a year after, like I think my, my friend Dylan started skating and he had videos and this and that. And then that's when the ball started rolling. What's the first skateboard video of memory that you remembered watching on the first skater that you were kind of like, hmm, I look up to that guy or I like that person. It was um, like, yeah, right. Um, audio, One Step Beyond and Flip. They all kind of came out around like 2001, 2002. Yeah, that was all kind of the same era, right? And that the yeah, right one of, correct me if I'm wrong, was like all the crazy, like that crazy intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah slow-mo. Yeah, and then the, super slow mo. And then the flip one was just like the gnarly, like like part after part after part. Like yeah, yeah, like I would say more like hash hardcore. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, but it was, I don't know, like it was sick. And then how, how did how how did your first sponsorship come about? Like, and then that and like kind of similar question. So where does Philly come into play here? Um, so when I was so starting with the. The sponsorship. I was sponsored by this skate shop called Extreme Function, and it was a half skate shop, half um, video rental place. Okay. And uh, <laughs> yeah, but did they probably didn't even As rent skate videos, right? No, no, no. It was just like full like blockbuster, but like not blockbuster. Like there, it was like a privately owned like video store, and then half was the skate shop so they kind of like split the rent i would assume did it come did that sponsorship come with free movie rentals no it was completely different they just were like kind of <laughs> in the same place you yeah. walk by the movie stuff and then the skate shop was in the back and uh by this lady marianne shout out marianne uh the home uh the homie alex york marianne york um 
That was the first, my first sponsor, Extreme Function. And, uh, yeah, I was actually talking with the homie James Petonia because we did something with NJ Skate Shop, like, a month ago. We, like, gave a bunch of skateboards out, like, 100 skateboards to kids, 100 privileged kids at these two schools in uh, New Brunswick. And we were talking about the whole situation because he rode for Extreme Function first. And he was like, oh, yeah, like, I remember Marianne being like, oh, like, we're going to put this guy on the team, like, he's the next thing or something. He just remembers me, like, <laughs> not being able to kick flip, just, like, kicking my board around. And he's like, uh, was like yeah, all right. All right. And, uh, Great addition and, to the team. Yeah. He was, like, a little bit older than me, and he was, like, he was, like, as long as I can remember, he was good. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, I came out. They're like, oh, we're going to put him on the team, and I was just shit. But I was a little kid, so. <laughs> but it was just a funny story. Got sponsored by them first. And then Philly came into play around the time when I was 14. In my town, they built this train system that went from Trenton to Camden, and uh, it went through my town. So I was able to take the train from my town to Camden and then the train from Camden into Philadelphia. And I would go to New York sometimes, too, but it cost way more money. You know what I mean? I, you, you take the train to Trenton the other way and then take the PACCO to New York, and New York's just farther away, more expensive, bigger city. So my mom felt a little bit more comfortable, more comfortable with me taking the train to Philly. And then that's how I started going to Philly because it was like 45 minutes away. New York was like an hour and a half. So I go 45 minutes away. And were you going with like your your team from Extreme there? Or were you like, did you make some new like skate friends when you kind of got into like the Philly scene? Um since that train system went from like all these towns in Jersey, um, we would kind of like meet other kids in other towns and all these stops. And then we'd like meet up with other kids and then go to Camden and then go over into Philly and just skate miles, skate miles and miles. I can't even believe how much we skated. But like we skated spots, barely get kicked out a lot and just skate like from one point of the city to the other to go skate some like shitty spot for like 15 minutes get kicked down and then go skate like to the other side of the city i love that it kind of reminds me of like the intro to the movie the warriors yeah have you seen that where they're all like (laughs) (laughs) on the train tracks and different they're all like meeting to like with different groups to then go to the big meetup which would then be you know yeah cecil (laughs) cecil b more go to go to temple cecil b more um, all right, around. so forget the kickflip because we know you can bust a kickflip. But what about when was their first 360 flip tray bomb landed? First tray bomb landed? I actually do not remember. I have really? no recollection of that. Um, I have recollection of my first kickflip, so I know you're trying to skip over that. But we'll, Okay, yeah. let's go to that because yeah, you, <laughs> you actually got sponsored without a kickflip. So when was the first one? Um, so I could kickflip when they were trying to sponsor me. It was just... It wasn't consistent. So my first kickflip was actually off of a, um, my, across the street from where I live. Um, there was like a, a step into my homies there. He wasn't my homie. Like across the street. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, he's not going to listen to this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Look, he's I, probably telling everyone that's my homie. <laughs> I don't, I actually don't remember what he looked like. I barely even saw the guy. So uh, just off his curb into his driveway. And I feel like that's kind of why I jumped down stuff because like I couldn't get it to flip on flat. And I was like, maybe if I go off something, I'll have a little bit more time for it to flip over. So I started trying it off stuff, like just a curb. And then my first one was like off of this curb into this like mellow driveway. Yeah. So that was cool. I was like, yeah. That's pretty sick. Nobody around. Whoa. No phones to record. We're like, it never happened. <laughs> did you, uh, what, what about, like, did you make your, uh, a sponsor me tape? Did you, like, get into that? or? So that's how I got, like, sponsors when I went to, like, Tampa. I, gotcha. made, I made a sponsor me, and around 2008, I gave it around, gave it out. For, like, the Tampa Am slash uh, pro? Or? Yeah, Tampa Am. Um, gave it out 2008. And then um, I think I went another, I think I went 2009. And then 2010 is when I actually started getting sponsors. 
That's crazy. So in 2010 is when you first started getting sponsors. And then in 2013, you released four video parts and earned Thrasher Magazine Skater of the Year. Yep. That happened. That's got to be a pretty record timing for uh, any skater or any athlete to go from that level to then. Yeah. And then it's crazy because like coronavirus was a big reflecting time for me because from the time when I was that age or even the time that I actually started getting sponsors, like, um, in general, um, I like kind of left. So when I was 17, I left my house and I thought I went to California for the second time. I thought I was going to be gone for like three weeks. I was gone for three months and then like (laughs) a whole life changed. And then I was just like never home after that. I didn't even finish school. Nothing, nothing. I was just like out. Yeah. And then I was pretty much traveling consistently for 11 years straight, partying, drinking, this, that, the third, oh, whoa. And the coronavirus happened, and I was like, hmm, reflecting time. I actually get months at home. I've never stayed more than a month at home without, like, being, like, hurt. And the only thing that I've ever really hurt is I've broken my finger. And then last year I broke my hand being a fucking idiot. I punched a trash can and broke my fucking hand. And then other than that, I like fractured a toe. So I never really get hurt like that. <laughs> Just, it's, it's funny because we've had quite a few people on here from motocross to this. And yeah. your injury list is, yeah, is pretty serious, right? Is for the <laughs> record. <laughs> So I never really get hurt We've that bad. We've never laughed at someone's injuries. Yeah, like, well, like, you know, I fractured mean, a finger. It's like well, I, I punched a trash hand, can. What's a trash I... can do to you? Yeah, uh, but you probably, have you ever like, like, sandwiched your yourself? Uh, what is it called when you like take pogo? the skateboard pogo between the legs? Uh, actually, when I was really young, I, was gonna say, yeah, I tried to do some trick, like a blunt slide or something, and my board went over and I slid the rail in credit card. Board okay. up, my shit slid down. But you know, I was so small and light, it was just like, oh, like, oh my god. But yeah. it's like, I wasn't that like, crazy. <laughs> well, we just want people to know how dangerous skateboarding can be, right? Uh, not can. for you. Well, yeah, it's dangerous. I mean, I just try to, I just try to avoid that type of shit. You know? <laughs> I mean, I guess everybody does, but maybe I'm a little bit better at it than other people. It I sounds mean, like you're yeah. perfected it. Ah, uh, yeah. It's, We'll see. And I mean, did you I <laughs> did you like watch a lot of videos to progress, or was it more just like watching people in person and challenging yourself at like these events? Um, I guess I ask a lot of people questions about anything that I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Not enough to where I'm annoying, but it's like let's just say I'm trying to learn a switch big flip. If I see someone do a switch big flip, that they can do a switch big flip, I'll ask him. Hey, give me a tip on switch big flip. And a lot of people will say the same thing. And there's always one person that will say something that's different than all the other people that will make it, you know what I mean? Give you give that, you that step, extra like, step. You know what I mean? It's not like, wait, this and that and this. Put it'll be like, here. yeah, it'll just be like, hey, like. Can you give us a scenario of where that happened? Um, I mean, I do it a lot with photography now because I got back I got yeah. back into photography. I yep. used to shoot, but I didn't know how to, like, use a manual camera. And yep. I'll just go around and I'll ask photographers, like, just very basic stuff. You know what I mean? Just, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And then some people will say very basic things. And then one person normally will say something. One or two people will say something that is different. And then that will... You know what I mean? Help my learning process. Right. You know? And then I just like, now it's easier to learn anything because there's YouTube. You can just like literally like. It's kind of crazy, right? YouTube it's like anything. kids, I think we were like the last era of growing up without the internet kind of being a daily thing. And now kids just grow up with it. Kids yeah. know they don't need to know anything because it, they know everything. It's in their pocket. I was, I was going to say, because you would think everybody would be like a little bit sharper, but. Mm. No. no, they know they don't have to be though. That's the problem. Back in the day, if you wanted to learn something, you had to, again, like when you got your skateboard, it wasn't like you just got your skateboard and all of a sudden you're at the skate park and then you've got this on me and that on me. It was a thing that took time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, uh, the, back in the day, you used to have to like, 
sort out what you're looking for and then grow into it. Whereas today that that it's it's very weird. It's like instant gratification. They want yeah. it. Yeah. But do they even really get gratification anymore either? It's like for a, weird... a minute and then they want more after and then it's just like a scrolling on TikTok or scrolling, they just do, do, like it keep do, like it just it's an influx. You know what I really hate is when you ask someone a question and they just go like Google it. And you're like, Well, I'm asking you. Mm. Or do like, you do I know? Like Google? Maybe you don't know. You could just like say something. Yeah. But well, like, I was listening to it. You learn through human interaction a lot more mm -hmm. than you just learn from like this yeah. is classic. I feel like I grab onto stuff better if I if someone teaches me something rather than me just being like, uh, it's harder for me to hold on to information me reading it. It's like one year more, one year out the other than just like if somebody that I actually like respect and I know tells me something. I'll like remember it like for the rest of my life. But if I just read it, it's like the chances that it stick with me, I would have to like read it and read it again and then read it again and kind of like keep reminding myself. But it's like if you told me something, like if we went snowboarding and you were like, hey, like and you gave me a tip, it's sticking with me forever. But I think but it's also just like your way of learning, like your exactly. visual auditory kinesthetic. So exactly. like you're like a hands on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's just like how I learn better. That's why I ask people questions yeah. and this, that, and the third for people from people that I think that would know this or that. Uh, that's why I ask questions the way I do because it sticks with me more than just like reading it. Well, I got a question. Watching. Is what? Could you give me any tips for the 360 flip? <laughs> because I hear a lot of people like that just say, "Oh, just scoop the tail." Yeah, um, but it never works for me. It is. See, anytime that someone asks me how to do a trick, I have to see how they do it. How first. bad they do it. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes how bad they do it. Yeah. Um, so I would have to see their technique, um, mm -hmm. the way they move their body, the way they move their shoulders, the way they move their legs. And then from there, I can give somebody a tip on what they're exactly doing wrong in a way that I could try to help them correct what they're doing to make them have a better experience or a better time learning said trick. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to email or text email you some you videos. <laughs> you just later. email him. You just email him. Well, I'm not going to email him. I'm going to text him. You just email, him. email yeah, Mr. Email Underwear him. the videos, and I'm sure he'll, uh, <laughs> he'll get right back to you. Yeah, I mean, that would honestly be the best way for me to help you with 360 flips is you sending me a video, and then I'd be like, all right, so, okay. well. <sighs> <laughs> well, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> First well, that's all, how you so. help me. I, I send him text. I text him videos of me snowboarding and I'm like, fix me. And he's like, OK, well, first of all, you don't text me videos of you snowboarding. I should. <laughs> I will. Dicko, Actually, I say, think I do. Make your stance bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I snowboard with the wide stance and people hate on me for it. It's what yeah. we used to do back in the day. And I still kept it. Yeah. All the it, kids today have skinny like, stances. Uh, it looks, they, it looks, looks a little kooky. It's like, uh, it's almost like <laughs> pirouetting because they spin so much. And when your feet are closer together, you have, you can spin better. I would assume that's what I would think, but I'm I don't not know. a sober. I mean, you want to bring in the body tight. I yeah. Think it's like tightening of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it goes back to a more. style thing for me. And I still think it looks better with the wider stance. Mm -hmm. so. I stand. So me snowboarding recently is. <clears throat> Because anytime I would snowboard, I would go to Zoomies 100K. And then recently, I started going snowboard, going on a snowboard trip to Utah every uh, every New Year's. And amazing experience. Utah has great snow. Great snow. Uh, the group I go with is just super fun. But besides that, I actually have a board, and I can ride the same thing every time. You got your own setup. You're yeah. not just showing up and like, here's something, a small board, and some yeah. boots that maybe fit, and a jacket. And yes, I yeah. have like a setup, <laughs> and I like set my board up like the way I want to. So I go to the snowboard shop, and I'm like, you know what? I skateboard, so maybe I should just choose more of a skateboard stance. So I like have my stance kind of more riding like goofy, straight shoulders this way. And it's like when I skate switch, I'm very comfortable riding kind of backward switch. So I was like, ah, I mean, I'm not that good to ride switch anyway, but if I need to ride switch, I'm not uncomfortable riding kind of closed off. But um, the person at the, the snowboard shop was very adamant. That I <laughs> I'm like, I think that I'll be fine. I'm, I have pretty good balance. I'll be good. 
and I'm much more comfortable that way. I got a camber board, you know what I mean? Got mm-hmm. some nice camber in there. <laughs> you know, it's powder on the top of the mound. I took the cat up, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. Head <laughs> down in the snow. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty good, but uh, that's I'm not, snowboarding. It's so fun, but um, I'm I'm not really good at tricking. It's I, okay. You don't I need to be. Nobody's an, expecting you to be tricking on your snowboard. I catch an edge on those rails there. Yeah, it's a different feeling, right? With like the metal and just like I I I grind down my sides and everything. Mm-hmm. They think you can't run out of it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure people have some pretty high expectations. Like if I was snowboarding with you, I'd be like, "All right, let's see that switchback lip." Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> no. That's Switch funny. Switchback <laughs> Cru- I would crucify myself. But also, like, pressing must seem kind of weird, like, on a rail on a snowboard oh, compared like, to, like, locking in with a truck. Yeah. There's a video. I can show you a video. I post it online. I try a 50-50. I, I feel like I'm going to lock, like I have wheels. Mm-hmm. No wheels, but... Yeah. You never fully lock. Catch my legs. Boom. Backflip. You know. Mm-hmm. Does he that hurt? It's like, I mean, No. <laughs> You're like I broke my finger. Yeah, like, I have a really high pain tolerance. Like I broke my finger and fractured my toe. So <laughs> Def- definitely good. Oh, uh, all right. So you're not necessarily a content sk- a contest skater, but you have won a gold medal uh, at X Games, Copenhagen twice, 2017. And 19 and the mm. SLS unsanctioned to what's your approach to skating contests? And I, I, I've seen you like skate uh, many a contest and you seem way less stressed than most of the other people out there skateboarding in a contest. Yeah. Um, because I just don't think it matters that much to me. Yep. I go to contests because, uh, I love skateboarding and I get to see a lot of people that I don't generally get to see because if I'm going on a skate trip, I usually skate with the people that I'm on a team with. So um, if I go to a contest, I get to see a lot of people that I haven't got to, that I don't get to see that often. And I've been skating with these people in contests since I was like 14, 15 years old. So it's dope to see everybody, see the industry. You always, I always see something crazy. People always do incredible things. And uh, if I happen to skate the contest good um, and win some money, cool. But um, the whole winning the contest and the glory thing and being like, I just won the contest. It's like, not, it's, it's not my thing. And I'm not good at celebrating. I'm honestly not good at celebrating <laughs> victories. Anytime, what do you mean? You got to elaborate on this. Anytime something like worth winning happens to me, just some weird shit happens, and I have like the worst night ever. Wait, so, what? So you, when you win, it, it's awkward. Every time. <laughs> Every like you like time. buy a bottle and then realize how expensive it is. <laughs> no, no, it's just like something just, as just something awkward happens, and it's just like not the night that it's all chalked up to be. Mm-hmm. And you celebrate too hard. No, it's just like I, I want to, and then some weird shit happens, and I'm just like, wow, that sucked. So now I'm at the point when I win anything, I don't care. I don't care. I'll just go home. I'm better off partying on a regular night than I am about something that I actually want. So I just, anytime I win something or anything good ever happens to me, I just try not to think about it like a big deal. It's just another day. There's something to that. No, they actually say, like, if you go into auditions or if you go into stuff expecting not to get it, usually that's when you get it. Like, I've always heard that over the years. And I think that there's something because you're not putting that much stress or pressure on yourself. You're like, eh, whatever, whatever happens, happens. And then, yeah, the, but, the nerves calm down and then you ride incredible. And then it's like another thing in the contest. It's like, oh, people are always like, it looks like you're just it looks like you're just like making it up. Cause I am. <laughs> Cause literally every single time I like have a contest run and practice it, I'll literally do it like a hundred times in practice. Oh, it's so easy. Oh my God. It's so easy. It's so, oh, when this contest happens, oh my God, I'm straight to the finals. Miss the whole line. Whole thing I've been practicing. I miss it. And then I try to do the plan for two times. Usually to get into the qualification 
qualifiers or whatever, you get three tries, two of the times, completely fuck up the line. And I'd be like, all right, I've been skating this park the whole weekend. I know what I can do. I might as well just skate around and see what happens. And then in that instance, I do good. Next nice thing I know, I qualify second or third or, or first. And then, um, and then it's hard to win the contest twice. That happens to me a lot too. I'll do really good the first day and I'll qualify like first, second or third. And then to skate again that good two times in a <laughs> row is just kind of just kind of hard. You know? No, and I you know everybody I, twice. Also, the, the format's kind of weird it's like, because oh it's like you just laced a whole line and then it breaks into like a best trick or something, and you're already geared for flowing around the park. Yeah, I don't know contests. They're fun. It's good <laughs> to see everybody. You could win some money, maybe not. Uh, yeah, well, then if you win, it sounds like you have a sucky night. <laughs> And if I win, I might have a second See, there's that. Reminds me of like New Year's Eve. Like, yeah, I was, I was going like to think that. That's why I go to Utah. Yeah. Because you're always like, Year's. oh, we're going to have the best two, New Year's I, Eve. I haven't had a good New Year's nah. Eve Well, since, the problem like, is with the four of us. Last two years, amazing. The problem is with Utah, the- Utah snowboarding. Yeah, because also it's like, this is, if you're in a big city, everybody always tries to do the sickest thing. Oh, like- I, I live in LA. Everybody's trying to go to some mansion party or like somebody's fucking house that they don't even know. That's like some crazy party. And it's like, don't you want to just like be in the New Year's with your friends? And then everybody tries to do the sickest thing and then everybody fucking separates. And then fucking homies over there, homies over here. Everybody's always trying to do all their own shit, do the sickest fucking thing. New Year's, woo! Like time is fucking, first of all, is fabricated. So, like, what is a new year? What is that new year? You know what I mean? That's a good question. So, it's like... What is it? It is a new year, but it's like... Nothing really restarts. No. No. We no. just keep going. So... <laughs> it's that, ongoing. So, that being a fact, it's like, what? Like, I would rather go somewhere away from all the bullshit, have a group of people that have already planned to go do something, and then you, everybody's together, and then it's not like... Somebody's gonna just split off and try to go to fucking Leonardo DiCaprio's house or something weird like that. Mm -hmm. um, Cause they never come back from that. <laughs> maybe not. I mean, that's never something that's ever happened to me. I just threw that name out there. But uh, yeah, it's just dope to just have your gang and just be there with them. And then also like when you're in Utah, there's activity. You can snowboard, there's something to do other than just drink. You can take Drink that. Fun. You can take that camber yeah. out and you know get that fresh. Pow. Yeah, <laughs> pow pow. We got some. Last two years we got some good days. Yeah, really good days. You know, I might have been able to show you something. You know what I mean? In that powder. He's like, well, maybe he's you like, can no, email no, Danny no, a video. No, 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 no. I'm looking forward to this because I Dude. feel like your energy around snowboarding is going to be amazing. Snowboarding so fun. I have an amazing time. I get broke off though. <laughs> it's you can definitely get some pretty nasty whiplash from shredding. Yeah, um, first time I went snowboarding, separated this shoulder. Second time I separated this shoulder. Oh, see here they come. Uh -huh. So the injuries come from snowboarding. Yeah, yeah, but it's never anything that bad. It's always yeah. like a separation. I didn't have to get surgery. It was like a, it was a month. Yeah, you're all I was good. I supposed to go to Dubai though, so that was a bummer. You never missed out on that Dubai. trip. Yeah. Oh well, there'll be plenty of time for that. What yeah. about? When in contests, what about when you're out? So you just have a new video part or the latest one with Spitfire. What about when you go out on a trip or getting a trick? When you get a good trick that you've been working on for a day or two days or a week or whatever the fuck it is. I'm pissed. When you get the trick, you're pissed. If it doesn't, if I don't land it in 10 minutes, I'm pissed. Really? Yeah. Even if I land it, I'm like, wasted my energy. I should have did that like two days ago. Oh, wow. I'm hot. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So you're just, when you achieve, you're just never that happy. Mm. <laughs> Hard to please me. <laughs> Except for going snowboarding on New Year's. That is, that's a pleaser. Yeah, yeah. And it's like I love riding my skateboard and this, that, and the third. And I, and I love landing tricks, and I love getting footage, and I love all this and that. But sometimes it just takes longer to do than it needs to because I know my capability better than anybody that could ever even lay eyes on me because no one's around me more than myself. Yeah. So anybody even telling me like, I know you can get it. It's like, I know, I know. 
a thousand times more than you think that I could do it. I know I can do it. So like, maybe just I don't even want to hear it. I'm I'm mad. What about like? <laughs> Let me be mad. What about like? Because I I see like you know sometimes on these you know team trips or filming trips you'll see like the people who just go and go and go to try and get it. Do you ever like kind of guilt? Is that like a guilty pleasure at all? Like watching someone just go over and over and over and on something? Um, no, um, I don't really let my feelings ever spill onto anybody else's stuff. You know what I mean? Um, like if I'm pissed about skating or something, it's always internal. If somebody is doing a trick, I want them to do the trick. I want them to have a good time. If they're hyped after, that's cool. They're hyped. I have my own feelings. They have their own feelings. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I don't really, I don't really like think too much or even make comments on other people's stuff. No, not like comment, but like, I guess for me, sometimes it's like funny to watch a hothead when you like, when they start board throwing and they start throwing it around and uh, you're just like, see, that's, that can be me. Is that you? It, it can be. <laughs> Are you a board breaker? Sometimes I'm like, um, have you ever seen, uh, the, the movie, the Hulk? Yeah. When it's like, uh, like 120 days without incident. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's me. That's you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like the hundred twentieth try, you lose it. It's just like just the, however that many day. Times, it's like just I'm days. chill. It, it might not even ever seem like I would get there. I'm so chill, and then, boom! Next thing I know, I'm a fucking psycho, and uh, and then it, and then I'm like anger prone for like <laughs> maybe like a couple weeks, and then it's like I then I then I go back into like. Have you ever broke like multiple boards in a day? So yes, I used to have like, like focus, not just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I used to have like like when I lived back in Philly, I had like five boards in my car at one point. I had like two, like at the same complete, just so if I broke a board because I don't like setting up boards. I had another one just in case I wanted to continue trying without having to set up a new board. And then I had like a long board cruiser board, and then I had another cruiser board, and then I had a like a mini deck that was like kind of like a 775 broke them all threw all my board all my shoes on the roof just everything you broke your your crew your long everything i broke everything (laughs) (laughs) yeah but it's a good outlet right and you're not hurting something else i can't your own property in a way yeah i can't really i don't think it's good to hold things like that in so it's like if i i'm very passionate about what i do and if I'm mad, I'm going to 100% be mad. I'm not going to be like, dude, you shouldn't be. You just let it out. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. Like, this is uh, this is internal. And then after, I'll take a walk. I'll come back completely normal. You know, but. Like the Hulk. Yeah, you, you like got to let it out. the Hulk mm-hmm. calms down. He's not green anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like green. It makes monster a lot green. of sense. Monster, <laughs> monster green. Monster, monster green. green. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And then I back it down. It's good again. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you released you released your Nike SB, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, the first one came out in 22. Yes. This one, new colorway. Boom. Oh wow. Nice. Yeah. How involved are you on the process of designing this shoe? Um uh, every aspect is, um, excuse me, every aspect of the shoe I'm a part of. The tread, the trim, the the mesh, everything. Literally everything. We have a meeting about every single aspect of the shoe. And uh, it's a really fun pro- process, yeah. The team's good. This one's, this one's cool. Wouldn't say it's the best one. See this I'm one. going to be completely. You got to critique honest. yourself here. Yes, I like that I, the inside. It's like I I always cooling. Cr- I always yeah. critique myself. I would say mm. I'm the hardest critic of myself over anybody. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a nice grip. It it is. It's been tested by the best. By the best. See this? And look at that. It's, it's got your name right there in the sole. Tested by the best. It's Tested cool. by the best. To see, because even at Danny's peak, he he designed snowboard boots with Nike, and it was cool to see that process. Which ones were those? 
They were called the Danny Cass. I don't. They were kind of off the Zoom force or whatever. I got to work with some of the some of the greats there. Uh, James Arizumi. He was a really fun to work with Steve Palatier. Um, but I invented this thing called the double tongue snowboard boot. So it's the it's the boot, and then you strap it up, and yeah. then it's another, and then it's the other boot that you strap up after. Kind of. Well, an extra tongue. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I have because I have Nike boots. I bought I bought some off uh, off eBay. Really? Yeah, because. Nike Which ones did you get? Yep. The crazy, like weird, colorful ones? No, they just they look like I think they were like Air Forces or something, but they were like black and then like with a blue swoosh. I had like a whole like I had a whole fit. I had like my Arcturus fit, with my Arcturus shell. You know what I mean? I'm, I and also I don't wear goggles. I wear I wear glasses. Do you? Yeah. Even when it's snowing? Yep. That's savage. Yeah, I just wear goggles and I mean uh, shades and. Um, do you wear sunglasses skating? Uh, sometimes I used to. Like when I was like twenty, mm-hmm. I would a lot. You know, back in the that Volcom Baker days where everybody was just wearing glasses. You know, <laughs> when they were skating, like Brian Herman and shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Back then a lot. I mean now, mm, I will. I mean, those ones look like you could do absolutely anything in. So these are glasses. What kind of glasses are those? These are Oakleys. They they look wow. like they're that's a Coachella fit gloss. I wore these in black to Coachella. <laughs> 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 I was definitely in Miami with these. You know, these are very versatile. I was that's on a, the mountain with these too. Yeah, they look like a mountain gloss. That's a savage yeah. colorway. You see this? This pops up. You know, and if you need like a little oh. extra. You need a little extra there. You so, never know when you're going to need a little extra arm. Yeah. <laughs> right, Brittany? Right. You never know when you're going to uh, need a little uh, extra no. how, <laughs> She likes that one. <laughs> how was your Coachella experience? Uh, burnt cella. It was cool. Burnt cella? Why burnt cella? You tell me. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't go. I didn't get it. I missed the joke. You could was it, did, did it guess. suck? Oh, you, you got sunburnt. No, it's just <laughs> like the weekend. It's just like it's just filled with with oh. activities. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get that. That's why I don't go anymore oh. because I can only do so many of those a year. Yeah, it's just a lot. It's you a know, lot. Up late, listening to music, dancing, a lot of events, walking, a lot of people events, walking, and uh, as much as people would like to think that uh, I'm extroverted because I can go and I can talk and I can conversate. I just learned how to be able to do that. I'm very introverted. Yeah. So like being around all these people and doing all this stuff like drains me heavily. Yep. Heavily. I just like, I'm just like, oh my God, I'm here. Oh, what did I do? I get Why? that with you. Cause <laughs> I feel like you're kind of looking around like, all right, I know who I am. Cause I'm with me every day, but exactly. you're looking around and you're like, there's some fucking idiots here. Why am I well, here? It's not even about. It's not even about that. I think somebody's an idiot or not. It's just I just don't like to be around that many people. Yeah. So it's like uh, I I could have an as good time listening to a music live. You know what I mean? With a bunch of people around, or not a bunch of people around, or in my house, completely comfortable. Just sitting, enjoying the music in whatever type of way, maybe laying next to the pool, yeah. dog next to me, blah, 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 girl next to me, chilling. Yep. You know, I would have the same experience, if not better, at home than seeing said performer because it's like, I love music. I appreciate performers. You know what I mean? I yep. appreciate what they do. But at the same time, I also don't care that much. I do, I don't hot hold anybody to a higher, like, you know what I mean? Everybody's a person. Yep. You know what I mean? Hey, I appreciate what you do, but it's like, I'm not going to, ah! like, yep. never like that. Hey, if I see somebody and I respect what they do, I'm not going to freak out, but I'm like, hey, I respect what you do. Hell yeah. Keep it pushing. Right. I'm not going to freak out. I've never freaked out over people like that. It's just like, it's not how I am. That makes a lot of sense. Speaking of people you do respect, um, 
uh, and this is something you moved into. And I didn't know this, but um, you you walked in one of Virgil's runway shows. Was that the first runway show you you walked in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, thanks to the team and whoever reached out to me, like that was like, hey, like we need to get him in here. Um, I actually never met per, uh, Virgil personally. I would talk to him online all yep. the time, but uh, about skating and this and that <coughs> is a lot of people did, which you saw all on the internet. People like yeah. posting all there. I I didn't feel comfortable doing that, um, but <clears throat> yeah, uh, he seemed like an amazing person. He very inspiring. I've you know what I mean. As time's gone on, I've looked up more and more about him and. Uh, just an amazing person did a lot of you know a lot of things for a lot of people and i walked in the last uh off white show that he designed like yep the last full you know line that he designed and uh it was a, it was a really dope experience and uh people were hitting me up they were like yo like are you nervous it's like i literally like fall in front of thousands of people all the time yep why would I worry about like walking through a room with a couple hundred people? Yep. Just because it's like Pharrell's in the room. It's like I said, it's like I approve like I think Pharrell's dope. I appreciate everything he's yeah. done, but it's like I'm not gonna like freak out. It's yeah. Like, yeah, it's just another person. So me walking through the room and me doing this that and the third, you just walk confidently. I walk through rooms all the time where there's a bunch of people looking at me. Yep. Why would I treat it any differently in a fashion show than this and that? And then they put you in these sick clothes. You got this big, <laughs> sick furry jacket on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Looking like a bouse. I saw the furry jacket. It and was... I'm just like, <laughs> did you get to keep that one? No, I didn't. Um, That's but, always the question, right? Did you get to keep the clothes? Is uh, that really the case? Sometimes. It, it really depends if you like know the good. Uh, and a lot of this time when they do a fashion show, the stuff, it's samples. Yeah. So the stuff isn't out yet. So that's a lot of the time why people don't aren't able to keep the stuff but uh yeah it was an uh, amazing experience um i met a lot of cool people um yeah and you're still doing it yeah i, I do it from time to time yeah i've walked uh in a, a hair and preston show in uh in new york and a kid super show poem did you have to learn how to walk or change your walk or <laughs> Uh, well, no, because I mean, like, yeah, actually, did you like I mean, add? I, 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 you, I honestly kind of like, like, like even chest from up. skating, like, I yeah, like yeah. I'm hunched over. You just want to walk with good posture, which but I not already, too much swag. I already try to do that. I mean, everybody has their own walk. They just walk with posture and confidence, and just I guess go. I mean, people tell me, oh, you walked great. That's, that's what I want to know, mean. right? Because. <laughs> You're putting on a lot of like stunts. I mean, video parts, skater of the year, right? And then yeah. someone's like, "That was the nicest. You walk so good." Are you like, right on? Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, because <laughs> you don't really know. I'm just like, yeah, I just. But it's 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 a cool experience. I like doing it. It's nice doing something um, outside of what I have been doing for my entire life. You know what I mean? And. Um, I'm more into fashion than people would assume because uh, I don't really post a lot about that on my Instagram because contracts and this and that. So when I go out, I be putting that shit on. Mm -hmm. But it's like I can't really be putting me putting all this different clothes on. Blah, blah, yeah, not blah. when you're wearing. It's not part of your job, and, you know. What? It's like it's, well, I'm saying that's not part of the the job. Like as a pro skateboarder yeah. and what you do for those companies yeah. that is a completely different different lane yeah so it's like you know so it's like people will see me in real life and they'll be like oh and then same thing kind of when i went out to paris and i was around and blah, blah, blah. oh you actually know how to dress out oh, oh, oh. yeah it's like oh yeah it's like i can't really put that on my instagram because it's like you know that's cool though yeah it's 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 fun you know what i mean i met a lot of cool people a lot of good good uh experiences and that you know again it's 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 about life experiences and having those opportunities and then being able to you know take on those opportunities even while i was talking to you earlier like i i know that you like were always heavily a car guy um yeah. originally you know bmws your old school bmw and 
and and I've seen that you've done some collaborations or small partnerships with them over the years. And yeah, yeah, again, yeah. for that, for you, that's something like as being a car person. Yes. Going and working with you know a, a car company like that is got to be like a dream come true too. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, after like spending countless dollars on souping up all these old BMWs, when they come in and they're like, "Hey, like we got this one," you're like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> Hell yeah!" Full circle. Let's go. It's uh, it's like uh, R.I.P. Ken Block. That shit's tragic. He's a fucking legend. But uh, yeah, car guy. I love that shit. Um, I actually wasn't into cars until I. So my first car was a 1999 Honda Accord. My mom was like, "Oh, reliable car. You should get this one." Couple months after the transmission started acting weird. Then my sister totaled it. She was fine, but don't have a car anymore. I was like, well, what car do I actually like? Um, and I'm and I used to watch a lot of rally videos and this and that. So that's why I kind of started leaning into um liking European cars. Because if you look at the way that American cars are especially back because I like older cars, so like back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, their races, the type of cars that they built, and American cars, a lot of power, uh, suspension, brakes, weight of the car, off, unbalanced car, 550 horsepower, brakes, small disc brakes, suspension, not good. All these stories of cars going off a dead man's curve in the 70s, 80s, blah, 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 blah. Why do you think that? Because the car, all their races are straight line. They go a quarter mile straight. Yep. You know what I mean? And then they're like, oh, this car is sick. And then you try to make a turn. Too heavy. Brakes aren't good. Suspension aren't. Suspension is good. Fly off the fucking road and die. I don't want to die. I want to have fun without <laughs> dying. So I'm looking at these all these European cars and these Japanese cars and their their racing style and the way that they drive is different. Lighter cars, smaller engines, suspension and brake are are equal, and it's more of a um, more of a balanced car. And their races are different, like Le Mans and the rally races yeah. and this and that. The cars are made to go through a turn and keep speed and do this and that. So I was like, hmm, dying, fun, current corners, turning, uh, European cars. And then, you know, Japanese cars, they have a completely different style as well, drifting, this, that, and this. Yeah, third. Toyotas, go, Toyotas run forever. Yes, and they're also very balanced cars. So I kind of like was more like, uh, European, Japanese over American. But okay. I do love American cars. So the car that I was telling you about me building is a, uh, is a Chevy Love. Yep. I want to build a Chevy Love, but I to for it to behave the way I want it to, I want to get a full frame built. So suspension, you know what I mean? Whole full frame, everything built. So it feels like a newer car, but has an old car look. Because I love the way old American cars look. But also... Tying back to that being an, an American car, a Chevy Love 1977, that's the one that I have, is actually in a Zuzu body because when Chevy wanted to get into mini cars cause, or mini trucks, because at that time they were, mini trucks were popular, but they didn't have the, they didn't have the means to do it and they owned a little bit of stake in, um, in a Zuzu. So they had a Zuzu send over a bunch of bodies from Japan and they rebranded them as Chevys put Chevy parts in it. So it's kind of like the, the mini truck that I have is like a, just like a Japanese Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy a Subaru. <laughs> no, how would you rate a Subaru? Um, all wheel drive. I mean, is that they, a Japanese car? Subaru? Yeah. I know it's Australian, right? No, Subaru's no. Australian. They just had the Australian guy do the promo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Subaru is not Australian. Subaru. Well, why do they call it the Outback? <laughs> <laughs> they literally had Mick Dun, uh, not Mick, uh, the uh, Mick Dundee who plays the Crocodile Hunter as the fucking poster child for the Subaru Outback when the Subaru Outback came out. Subaru is not an Australian company. I think it might be European. 
Yeah. Like I that's so if they're like the like the they were one of the most popular rally cars because right. yeah. of Colin McRae. Yeah, and I'm yeah. pretty sure Subaru is a European one of the, I could be wrong. Definitely not Australian. We don't own shit. The one car company we had holding it is gone. There's no manufacturing happening whatsoever in Australia. And I'm not a big Subaru guy, but, but Bucky's Subaru is really sick. Oh yeah, the white one, gold rims, built it built it by by his own bear once. Do you get in there and like work on the car yourself? I know you so, put some parts in or. Uh, so that's what I wanted to do with the uh, Chevy Love. I want to have an actual part in building the car. Obviously, not the subframe or the frame because I want the car to. I want it to be. So there's so there's some things that I'm gonna do on the car, and mm -hmm. then there's some things that aren't gonna. I'm not gonna be able to do because I don't. Yeah, you know what I mean. If I want the car you want to, to be, be safe, not just safe. I mean, I'm not gonna build it by myself. I have a friend that has worked in custom fabrication shops and I'll pretty much be a hand to him oh this stands do you know what I mean I, I pick up on things quick but like the body work I'm obviously not going to do the body yeah work. but it's like you're building it or you're a part of the process you um, just have a guy that knows I'll exactly drop, what they're doing I'll drop the engine in yeah put all the put all the gaskets and all yeah. that stuff you know what I mean all the stuff that really doesn't take like that Fine yep. attention to detail stuff. I'll be doing the nut because you want to survive. I don't think I would like blow up or no, anything. I'm like. no. I'm just saying, if you built a car by yourself, it might not be the safest car. Um, I think it would just take me a really long time <laughs> to do it. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, I I think that I could. I think it would just take take me a really long right. time with all with all the traveling that I do. Yeah, this, that, and the third. I mean. That's what you do when you're retired. I had a friend of mine yeah. that retired, and he bought uh, like an old body from the body, and he built it from scratch. See that? That would take too long. And it did. It took him years, but he was yeah. a retired guy that made yeah. a bunch of money. He's like a fucking. This is a hobby that I've always wanted to do, and I'm gonna build my own car. Yeah. And the thing was sick in the end. It was like a like a, a, a I forget what model it was. But it was like a '66 body, and then the whole thing was brand new. Yeah. yeah. Like it was sick. Yeah. But that's uh, that's what you do as when you're retired and. Yeah. Down the road, you have a lot of travel coming up. Yes, um, Japan, which you're stoked about. We used to yeah. love going to Japan back in the day. Yep. X Games Japan will be there. Um, also, Copenhagen this year. Yep. Do you Copenhagen. going back to something that you've now won twice? Do you feel pressure going back to Copenhagen? Uh, absolutely not. I actually am going to skate in the contest, but I'm pretty much going there to skate street. Yep. I want to skate the spots. And then I'll pop up and, you know what I mean? I'll try to, but uh, I have really no, like, I'm going to win the contest. Yeah. But do you like if that kind of, that vibe more of like a I mean, skate demo type feel where you have like is, the crowd so close because it's is so best, different? That's the best contest in the world. I love like watching Copenhagen, it where they have like the hallways of people. Copenhagen is the funnest contest in the world, man. There's no contest that is funner to go to than Copenhagen Open, hands down. But I feel like it's probably the same way for the skate spectators there, too. That is exactly why I'm speaking in a whole, as a whole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, just a format. Uh, you, get, you There's a whole week for you to, for you to possibly qualify for, for the finals. Um, also, when they do it, uh, in Copenhagen, it is the sun stays up until like eleven thirty at night, and then it, um, and then it sets for like three, four hours, and then the sun comes back up at like three thirty in the morning. So you can, and then the contest starts really late, like around eight thirty nine at night. So then you, so you have a whole day to go skate, do whatever you want, even sleep. You can even sleep till five p.m. and still get a full six hours. Go skate, catch the end of the contest, and then after the contest, you can party until three in the morning. Sun comes back up. You can you can stay up till five in the morning, and the sun is up before you go to sleep. Go to sleep, get a full night's sleep, wake up, get another whole full day to do whatever you want to do. And there's good food. You get a really good grasp of the city because you're riding bikes around everywhere. It's just yeah, you you literally can't beat it. You can't beat it. And any contest in America, it's like you can't drink in the streets. You can't do this in the streets. You can't. You don't. You're gonna be ha like it, 
the destinations are different places every single every single day and a contest can't happen like that where it's like oh you you the city is just so accessible that you can just like oh ride your bike over to here and they actually embrace skateboard culture so it's like they build obstacles and this and that into their everyday life and you can go there and skate and people aren't gonna like freak out and kick you out you know what i mean it's like accepted so you could go skate this spot with everybody and be like oh yeah like we're gonna like meet over here and then you guys meet over there you have a whole street party which is also a skate contest and then you go out the whole night and then sleep for however long you want, wake up, and then there's another street party like at a completely different part of the city, and you're really getting a grasp of the city because you're biking everywhere. So it kind of sounds like it's like the Coachella of <laughs> street skating Coachella? contests. Uh, burnt Cella? Burnt Cella. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like Coachella, like, you know, they got all these concerts going on before like four o'clock. No one really goes to them, you know? <laughs> you can sleep till like four or five, go to the event, have a good time. Yeah. Or not go to the venue. You could just go to, but because go to like, another party where there's another performer the performing. Coachella's only three days. <laughs> oh, and this mean, is... Copenhagen's oh, oh, literally a week long. Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah. it's like both Coachella weekends packed into one week. Yeah. It's like yeah. Coachella meets the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, honestly, comparing Copenhagen Open to Coachella is actually like mind-bogglingly insane. But... <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, it's 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 a really good time. I mean, there's a lot of uh, like uh, any viewers from Japan out there. If you want to go to X Games, I'll be there. It'll be an amazing time. It's not gonna be like Copenhagen, but it's gonna be fun. Uh, Tampa Pro, obviously a great time. Um, street leagues, they're just different. They have a different vibe. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, just. Any contest that already happens in Europe is just way more lax because it's like, it's just, it's just a chiller vibe. Just like being in Europe is just yeah, mellower than being out here. Like where can you even drink in the streets here? You, you want to watch your favorite skateboarder skate and just like walk down the street and drink a beer because you're, you're chilling. You got the weekend off. You're trying to see some skating. You're trying to have a good time. Oh, I just I'm gonna leave my hotel. I'm gonna walk to the to the skate park. I got my hotels right down the street. I'll have a beer. I have two beers before I go over there. I have a nice buzz before I I see my favorite skaters. In America, you could possibly get arrested walking oh. to to your hotel to there. Oh, it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. In America, guaranteed with a skateboard in your hand and a beer in your hand, you're going down. Yeah, <laughs> and out there, it's just like, uh. Whatever, however they say hello in their language. The cops be like, oh, well, there's a bunch of different ones. <laughs> how you, how you, how's your day going? Yeah. Carry on. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, it's just a different vibe. I yeah. like that. Danny, before we finish off, he has this like lightning round that he tries to like get done. It's just quick kind of answers. He thinks about them very hard. These are very detailed questions. Really? Super detailed. They're Pretty quick detailed. but detailed? Yeah. Interesting. You just be quick. Mm. I'll be detailed. <laughs> All right. All right. It's biggest, hard for me to be detailed. Biggest no, I mean, New quick. Jersey skate hero growing up. Uh, biggest New Jersey skate hero growing up. Hmm. There's a lot, man. Uh, Fred Gold is pretty beast. Okay. Mine would be Tim O'Connor. Tim O'Connor is close second. Okay, close second. I actually second. just took an Uber with him recently. We were in Tampa, and he hadn't been there for 10 years. I was like, really? That's crazy. I feel like Tampa would be the wildest event. At least it used to be the Tampa Pro. Tampa Pro is very wild, but it's like you still can't regulated. Drink, you, you, yeah, you can't, can't drink, drink in the streets. You All right, drink in the streets. Um, you what get is arrested, your maybe by a, like a horse cop or something? Oh, <laughs> that's crazy shit. Okay, what's I your seen somebody get hog tied? <laughs> you're being drunk there. For your dream, time. your dream classic car purchase. Dream classic car purchase. Yeah. <laughs> so. That might be a whole nother show. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Just Keen, one. Keen Project uh, Safari Porsche. So it is a, um, it is an 80, or is it a, it's a 70 body, um, just remastered as a, uh, as a um, rally car. Uh, favorite skate city in the world? Um, 
probably Copenhagen or Barcelona. I was going to say, what about Barcelona? Yeah, or somewhere in Australia. Australia has really good spots. They have the wood, the trees that they have there are more dense than the trees mm. we have in it's America. Like teak, yeah, mahogany it everywhere. Yeah, it like grinds super good out here. It's like... Interesting. Yeah, it's just soft bullshit wood. Right. Uh, who's These your... Particle board and shit. Favorite on. fashion designer. Favorite fashion designer. That's hard. I don't like any one thing that anybody makes like if it's like that's like asking me what's my favorite music artist it's not gonna happen i don't like listen to albums all Fine. the way through i listen to like one song i like one and i'll be fucking with that for a minute and then you know what's the um that, that one's hard i'm that's very tough. indecisive that, well that's that, that you answered it perfect what's the weirdest food you've ever eaten oh um I was in Sicily and ate horse. Oh. Never thought I would. That's eat weird, horse. right? What, what part of it? Yeah, uh, the hooves. Uh, hooves. Yeah, maybe I've heard a, about that. Yeah, no, I made that up. Did you? Yeah, you I didn't eat horse. He doesn't even I, know I, what I, he I've ate. ate hoo- I've ate horse, but not the hooves. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the thigh or something. I don't know. I've had horse sushi before in Korea. You've had that horse sushi. Uh, oh, thanks, horse sushi. Did I like it? Yeah. You're yeah, about horse hooves. I mean, um, you've heard of. I mean, fucking. I didn't know. <laughs> hey, listen. If you put it in front of me, I'll eat it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the lamb brain thing. Don't even. I didn't even flinch. Oh, I think I ate some sort of. Like, Tastes like chicken. Brain. Tastes like chicken. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. give it to me. Cool. <laughs> All right. In the final question. Final. What's bumping in your headphones right now? Uh. Your voice? <laughs> Perfect. That is a that wrap. Is really... Brittany, anything? No, thank you so much. Probably one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. interviews yet. Mr. Underwear. 